Just the other day, my husband and I drove a few hours south to Cocoa Beach, Florida to go kayaking for the first time in oh so many months. And as soon as we got in the water, paddling along the mangroves and the intercoastal waterway, right in front of us, this dolphin jumps out of the water. And off to the left, I spot this 12 foot manatee. Oh my gosh, I was in heaven. Up in the air were a few of what I call dinosaur birds great blue herons and brown pelicans with their six foot wingspan. It was such an awesome experience. But what if I told you that you don't even have to get in your car to experience awe? My guest today is Alan Klein, the author of The Awe Factor. And he suggests that especially now in the middle of a pandemic, we would all benefit from practicing some awe aerobics because experiencing awe can reduce our stress level, improve our mood, help us to feel less depressed, take our attention away from all those other worries. What is awe? Well, even Ellen found it difficult to define, but it's typically a blend of fear and wonder. I and mean, think about that lightning in a thunderstorm, or maybe something that you define as breathtaking, inspiring, gives you goosebumps. So let me formally introduce Alan Klein. Comic Jerry Lewis has said that Alan Klein is a noble and vital force watching over the human condition. He's an award-winning professional speaker, TEDx presenter, and the author of 30 plus books, including his latest, The Awe Factor. Klein shows audiences worldwide how to find humor and positivity in their not so funny stuff. Do you wish you had more energy so you could feel better, stay focused at work, and have more fun at home? Well, there's nothing stopping you. Professional athletes have used the science of peak performance for decades to help them to perform better. And you can too. The research supports that all it takes is just small shifts in the way you eat, sleep, move, and think. So listen in as me and my guests talk about how to energize your life so you can be happier, healthier, and more productive. So welcome, Alan. Oh, good to be here. Great so, to be here, actually. It's awesome to be here. It is <laughs> awesome to be here. You know, and, and, I, and I shared that story, and I think it was awesome. That was the first thought that popped into my mind, but there's a lot of beautiful things that happen in our life. How do we know if it's awesome? What defines that? Well, I, I personally think awesome is used too much, but what, what I'm trying to tell people in the book, the awe factor, is that there is awe around us, and the world is really awe-filled, which is what I, word that I like better, a, a put-together word, awe-filled. Awe Not awful. Not awful, <laughs> I know, is I caught that. Word. Yeah which um, may have come from the original meaning of all, which means reverence filled with fear and wonder. Ah. You don't know, think of like when you talk about seeing dolphins or something amazing in nature, you don't think about the fear sometimes. Although if you're being chased by a lion, <laughs> that might, you know, you turn around and see it. <laughs> Well, but, a lot of fear. but we did swim with manatee a number of years ago and manatee um, are huge. I don't know what, eight, 10, 12 feet. They're just sea giants. They're very sluggish moving. They move very, very slow, but, but to be next to them, it is still fearful, mm -hmm. but absolutely, I mean, takes your breath away. Absolutely. So there you just said it. When, when I was researching awe, I thought, well, what, at least for me, what is awe? So it's something that takes my breath away, something that knocks my socks off, something overwhelming, something that I can't really explain. You know, how did this happen? How mm -hmm. did I, I was walking Yosemite and top of Vernal Falls and a friend I hadn't seen in 40 years, used to be an apprentice of mine when I was a scenic designer, was coming down the hill and I was going up the hill. Wow. I mean, how does the, to me, that's an all moment, you know? How it does is. this happen? Because yeah. we could have been anywhere else, you know? What that just, mo that one moment, that one second, or if he had come down the hill, 
20 seconds later, I might not have seen it more. So uh, to me, that that is truly all. all the, often people go, oh my God, <laughs> you know, and that's, um, and so one of the things in my book, at least for me, awe is the connection to the divine. Yes. Yes. And I think people saying, oh, my God, kind of illustrates that point. Well, I love in your book how, first of all, you started with stories like that one you just shared. My story of the dolphin isn't in there, but I could see it in other people's stories. And um, I, could, I could definitely share the awesomeness with them in saying, wow, something like that happened to me once. And then the second half of the book, you actually talk about how to get more awe. Because let's face it, some of us are watching too much news. And maybe right now in the middle of winter, the weather is not quite what you want it to be. And you're thinking, oh, I've got to shovel out, you know, out the, you know, the cars tomorrow. Um, we need some more awe in our life. And so I love your three-step process, stop, look, and listen. So can you run us through what that is so we can all find so more awe in I our lives? I came up with that is because we're on the cell phone so much or mm -hmm. we're on the TV or our internet so much that we don't stop, look, and listen. And no wonder we don't see the awe in our life. It's mm -hmm. there but we're so occupied with all these other technical things that we don't stop, look, and listen for the all. You just mentioned maybe snow. And I, I don't know when this show will be on, but we're recording it when the East Coast is just, eight, I just heard on the radio, I'm in the West Coast, so I'm yes. not experiencing this, but 18 to 24 inches of snow in some places. And I'm sure that's annoying for people and shoveling, but... <laughs> I used to live in New York City and when it would snow that much, I would love it because the city stopped, look and listen. So I'd listen, the traffic, you couldn't hear the traffic at all, or the taxis or the horns, it would become so beautifully quiet. And that only happened when it was a big snowstorm or I'd look out my window and everything would be white and pristine and beautiful as opposed to times when it was kind of <laughs> dirty after the snow melts you know what i mean cuz oh, yeah. i lived i grew up oh. up north too so the snow oh. melts and the rain comes down and and the dirt the snow gets dirty and then it turns into mud so that's yeah. what i'm referring to yeah. so so just you know just stop look at it listen cuz even the snow or i was thinking next time i see snow i won't go i'm going to stop and I wanted to know if I could hear the snow falling. I think you can. I don't know. I thought of it while writing the book. And then I thought, I, I've got to be in snow. Because I know with rain, you could hear the different rain on different parts. And in fact, the other day, I was looking from on my life. I try to do that every day now. And I was in the shower. And I realized just stopping and listening the water sounded like the waterfalls I was under when I was in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. And I can see that. You could see it, and but we don't think of that, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm in the shower, you know, you just, what am I going to make for breakfast? <laughs> you know? Right. So, so, so many just, of us are multitasking. So, um, and, and you were talking about snow. I don't know if I can hear the snow fall literally. But I do remember, and now I live in Florida, but I grew up in New England, so I was you know, definitely exposed to a lot of snow. And I still can remember the sound of the crunching snow as you walked on it. Right. That's a beautiful sound. Yeah. And, and Florida is you know, lightning capital of the world. And you know, we lived in Orlando and I, I know people used to always refer to it as that. And I would literally sit on the back patio and just watch those lightning storms. You know, they have the lightning go, you know, horizontal and then vertical and light up the whole sky and, and everything. There, Beautiful. You know, there's another example of fear and wonder because the lightning's yeah. wonder, but then when that thunder comes and crashes down. Oh yeah, as long as it's not on your house, you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, as a kid, I used to hide under the, the blanket, you know, at night mm -hmm. if there was lightning and thunder. Yeah. So there was fear there. So, so that we covered some of the listen, but just to 
to stop. Okay, but, let's go back to the stop. So yeah. how do we force ourselves? Do you have to just constantly remind yourself, put away the phone, turn off the internet? I mean, what are some strategies that you use to make yourself stop, to remind yourself to stop? So I don't have it in my pocket right now, but I often carry a three by five card with the letter A on it. And whenever oh. I feel it in my pocket, I kind of oh. look around. You know, I just stop whatever I'm doing, look around for yeah. something that's going to uplift me, amaze me. And, you know, this new science, science it just came out, uh, one study last September, going on an all walk could help us be happier and connect to other people. And um, there was one other thing, and, and be more positive and diminish okay. some of the negative. Well, especially now during the pandemic, many of us are still working from home. And I know a lot of people have told me that they've substituted that morning and afternoon commute with a walk as kind of like a, they walk and then it's time to start work and then they walk and that's the end of the workday. So they use it as a defining moment. Right. But wouldn't it be great instead of using that to catch up with a friend, to actually give yourself some quiet time Mm -hmm. to just look around yeah and if i have a tedx talk on the power of intention so mm -hmm. because this study had one group that were not told to find some awe and the other group was told to find the awe and the group that wasn't told didn't get some of these benefits so ah. when you do go on the walk Think about, okay, because I, I went to this class last year and, and we every day we were told to go and find something out of the house and take photos of it. And one day it was mm -hmm. finding everything that's heart shaped. And yes. I had been growing uh, morning glories on my front gate and walked in and out every day, never noticing until that moment that the leaves were all heart shaped. Oh. So intention, put some intention that you want to get something that will delight you or knock your socks off or whatever it is. That's an interesting thing about looking for the hearts. You know, I, I so Alan, maybe you need to come up with a, a, a card set that has pictures of things that you're supposed to look for, like a heart or wow. maybe of a, a purple color, you know, and maybe you're thinking, well, I can't find any purple, but maybe the sunset that day might have that purple color. Yesterday, the... The odd... The, the I odd deck. <laughs> there you go. That's your next project. You don't have enough projects. How many books yeah. have you written, Alan? Oh, this is 30 something. I, <laughs> I, I, I stopped counting. <laughs> but, but I do it, like that idea. Another, I was interviewed by a woman last week. She has a podcast called Love Let Us Live. And when she heard about putting your intention out, she said, yes, go find something that awes you. Write yourself a letter about it mail the letter and then when you get the letter you get like double all because the first time you saw it and wrote about it and the wow. next time when you receive the letter about it that's beautiful yeah <laughs> well i think i do the same thing if my photo albums um not everybody has photo albums in fact uh, a guest on the podcast shared with me like ah who, whoever looks at photo albums you know after you're gone nobody's gonna look it's just taking up clutter i'm like no I take pictures of things and then I can relive those memories mm -hmm. and just today I had my three-year-old granddaughter over and she was uh, pulling at the photo albums and we were looking at pictures of when my daughter was her age her mom and uh, and I got to live through all those experiences all over again and share the, the stories she loves to hear the stories yeah, I wish yeah. it um, over there, so I don't want to get up, um, but it's my daughter, she was a teenager, and for years she wanted to have a cream pie thrown in her face. <laughs> this okay. was like, you know, every birthday, what do you want for your birthday? I want a cream pie. <laughs> so she was at camp, she got off the bus at the end of camp, there were 40 of her friends around, and I threw her cream pie in her face. And this photo, she is just glowing. <laughs> when I look at that photo, it just lifts me up. In fact, I used to do a lot of keynote speaking and workshops on uh, therapeutic humor. Mm -hmm. And I would always have that photo in front of me because if things mm -hmm. weren't going 
quite well, I would look at that photo and I, the joy just overwhelmed me because of that photo. Oh, so another great. way to get more all in your life is have the, in fact, you know, you talked about nature and getting off from nature and nature yeah. is the biggest generator of all, but Scientific research just shown you don't have to be in nature. You could have pictures na of nature. I around. know, I've, I've heard that before. Or yeah. even a plant oh, that's in your office? That's in my garden and I put this- Are those up. hibiscus? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what flower it was. I don't think They're so. beautiful. That's one of my favorite colors. So just having a photo of nature. Yeah. Could, help you get more of, of those benefits in your life. Do you think my plant here helps? My plastic plant? <laughs> Why don't you have a real one? You know <laughs> what? Because I don't want to take care of anything else. Oh, okay. But you know, I, have, I have some plastic, well, whatever the fake silk flowers in my dining room that I've had for years. And they're just so beautiful. Where can you get real live um, flowers that bloom like that every single day. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna go with the fake stuff right. because if, it if makes it me happy. If it works for photos of nature, I'm sure it works for plastic plants. <laughs> it works with plastic plants. <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay, so we need to, we all need to stop, slow down a little bit, right. maybe, you know, turn off the internet, turn off the TV, turn off our tablets, stop, look. Yeah. So I like look, that. If, if you know the number one, I just said the number one all generate is nature. But the number two, Joe, do you know what the grandkids, number two? grandkids being around kids? Oh, yes. I knew it. I knew it. Newborn or young kids. Oh, um, you want more all in your life? You don't even have kids? Go sit in a playground and just watch. I, I agree. They, they, the kids give me so much joy. I have uh, seven grandkids wow. that are, you know, six and under. And wow. um, I, I, yeah. I love it. So there's a look, you know, just stop, look, look at kids, look at your meal. How often do you sit before you eat your meal? and think of the trip that, okay, say the broccoli. Someone had to plant it, water it, um, tend it, um, harvest it, bring it to the store. Some clerk had to put it out. Some clerk has to check it out for you. You know, there's all of these. And they did that all for a few bucks. I find that pretty awesome. Yeah. Like that is a lot of work that you just defined. And we bought it for a few bucks. Right. Incredible. Amazing. When I was a kid, I grew up in the Bronx, New York. So I had a little box with, I took some lima beans and put it in a wood box to grow yeah. in the fire escape. I was amazed this little shriveled up bean that looked like it was ready to be thrown away would produce these big stems of green leaves. We never got any lima beans, but <laughs> so just think about the food you eat and where it came yeah. from and harvesting and all the people that were involved mm -hmm. in what you're eating it's truly amazing to me when when i could think that way yeah and then and then pay attention even you know I, i'm a um, phd nutritionist so yeah i'm always encouraging people to be more mindful about their food not to just chew and swallow chew and swallow but actually like you said look at it yeah. notice the texture of it and so uh, I did that. I was on a retreat years ago uh -huh. and they sat us on the hillside, about 40 people, each got one raisin. And they said, look at the raisin. Your raisin is totally different than everyone else's raisin. There are no two raisins alike. So we looked at it for 10, 15 minutes, the color, the texture, the shape. And then we put it in our mouth and didn't chew it, just kind of, what is the feeling? What is the surface? and then slowly chewed it and the sweetness that comes out of the little seed, feel the seeds. It probably took us at least a half hour to eat one raisin. And I still remember that was, a, that was an awe moment for me because I never had thought of a piece of food that way. Yeah. 
and how awesome that is. <laughs> again. And, and, and we've earth, done, but... I've done that in, um, in workshops where we do that as a mindful exercise with a raisin. So uh, that's commonly used, but I don't think that most of us have done something like that. Mm -hmm. And it really truly is an awesome experience. People were like, wow, I, I, I never really perceived that there was that much sweetness in one little raisin. Right. Um, you know, I know other people have done it. And our previous guest, she talked about the Hershey kiss experiment where you right. just put a Hershey kiss on your tongue. And again, don't chew, just let it melt and how it might take like 10 minutes for that uh, 10 minutes of, and I'm, I'm a chocolate fan. So uh, not, not, not milk chocolate it has to be dark chocolate, but still, you know, to have that experience last 10 minutes rather than how long does the usual one? What? Right. 20 seconds. Sure. Right. And, yeah. and what got me about that raisin experience was that each, when we were told there are no two raisins alike, and it's so it's like people. There are no two people alike. You know, we're all different, and uh, but yet they're all is beauty or the um, nourishment from each person. Um, mm -hmm. So again, you know, we can go on and on and on, but it's basically stop, look, and listen. <laughs> can we can we smell too? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, like, there was there was somebody down the street. I don't know what exactly they're cooking. And every single time I go by there, I'm, I smell it, and it reminds me of my grandmother's house. And she's passed thirty, forty years ago. I don't remember. Um, I have to think about that. But still, it brings back those memories of the kitchen, the tile on the floor, and and it. I don't really know what the smell is. I need to knock on their door and say, what are you making? Because it's definitely my grandmother's house in here. Yeah. But um, it reminds me of there's a wonderful play I like by Thornton Wilder called Our Town. Yes. A teenager dies and she goes to heaven and she pleads that she wants to go back one more day to her family. And you see her go back and she's just standing there while they're doing all these things. And I went to see the show a couple of years ago off Broadway, and the the mother was actually cooking bacon on the stage. So not only did you see this young teenager, you know, looking at the whole family, but you could smell what it was like in her kitchen. Oh. And uh, but it also is like, how often do we just look around us at everyday things, and it's. The point in the play was, you know, we, we miss so much because we do not smell or see or look or taste or whatever it is. There you we go. We just don't do it. And well, thanks, Alan, for giving us this reminder to stop, look, and listen and, and find all those awesome things that are right here in front of us so we don't miss them. I really yeah. enjoyed reading your book, The Awe Factor. And uh, why don't you tell uh, the listeners a little bit about how they can reach out to you <laughs> and uh, get a copy of your book? Sure. So the book is wherever books are sold, particularly online, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, your local bookstore could order it. Um, and I'm at Alan, A-L-L-E-N, at alankline.com. Just spell it right, A-L-L-E-N-K-L-E-I-N. And if you look that name up on Amazon, you'll see all of my 500 books, uh, 30 yeah. books. Yeah, Alan, thanks so much for being on the call. Oh, I look forward you. to- This was great, I loved it. Yeah, please let me know when your next book comes out. We'll do all the awe of deck. <laughs> I, really, you need to do that just to remind oh. us. We pick one out and then we go on our walk to look for that color, that shape, that maybe a scent something. I love it. Yes. I'll think about it. I'll let you know. Well, I get some uh, royalties, royalties from that one. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, no, that, that, that's a freebie there. All right. Well, thanks, Alan. Appreciate it so much. Thank you. Appreciate Bye. it. Too. Bye. Do you want to help the people in your organization get re-energized? for greater productivity, performance, and profitability? 
then invite me to speak at your next conference or meeting. I'm now offering fun interactive quiz show formats with prizes for everyone. So learn how to eat for performance, get better quality sleep, or manage your stress now. To find out more or to book me, go to drjoe.com. That's D-R-J-O.com.